On today's Locked On Utes, we're talking about if the Utah defense is up to the task when it comes to stopping Bo Nix and the Oregon offense. Also, can the Utah ground game get going and thus the Utah offense get going against an intimidating Ducks defense? All that and more coming up next. You are Locked On Utes, your daily podcast on the Utah Utes. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everyone, and thank you for making Locked On Utes your first listen every single day. We are available on all platforms, including YouTube and wherever you may get your podcasts. If this is your first time listening to our show, make sure you guys like it, subscribe, love to interact with you guys in the YouTube comments or on social media. Today's episode of Locked On Utes is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook. They're the official sportsbook of Locked On. You can make every moment more right now. New customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit fanduel.com slash locked on to get started. My name is JT Wister, so former intern inside the University of Utah Athletic Department. And on today's show, we're going to be talking about all the matchups that make this a fascinating matchup between the Utes and Ducks, because it's the reason that College Game Day is coming here. Top 15 showdown in Salt Lake City, and it's going to be a fun one to watch. Second segment, we'll be talking about the defense, or excuse me, the Utah offense and how they're going to do against the Oregon defense. Lastly, I do want to talk about why. I believe there is not a debate right now that Kyle Whittingham is the best coach in the Pac-12. I think there was a little bit of a fair one over the summer, but with the recent success that's transpired for Utah, I think that debate is officially put to bed, and Kyle has to be considered the guy. If you want to hear my rant on that at the very end of the show, make sure you guys stick around for that. But let's start out with something else. Let's talk about if the Utah defense, one of the best defenses in college football, is going to be able to slow down Bo Nix and the Oregon offense. When you're talking about Bo Nix, you are talking about a guy who has already 2,000 passing yards on the season. He has 19 touchdowns to just one interception. And we also know, of course, he is a threat with his legs, too. He has 105 yards on the ground with two touchdowns, but his legs could definitely be a factor against an elite defense like Utah, where some of the Utah defensive linemen are going to win their reps, and then it's going to be pressure in the face of Bo Nix. And it's what kind of decision is he make? Is he going to try to throw it under duress? Is he going to throw it away? Is he going to just try to scramble and make something happen? Or is he just going to make the guy miss take off and run? All those things are possible. So I do believe Utah can, and especially in Rice Eccles Stadium, I think they will be able to slow down Bo Nix. It's not going to be easy. This is a, the Oregon team is a much tougher matchup to me than USC was. Even though you you said USC was on the road, this one is at home. When you're talking about this Oregon team, Kyle Whittingham said they have no weaknesses. And I think overall, he's, he's right in that statement. Because when you look at it, let's just look at them offensively for this. Bo Nix is a legit Heisman contender whose lone loss came in a thrilling game against Washington and this Oregon's team's lone loss, of course. They do have a pretty good offensive line that does a good job. Bo Nix only sacked four times all year long. It's despite playing a team like Washington recently, and they've been tested a few other times throughout the year. Uh, four sacks through this point in the season, really impressive stuff. You got playmakers, Bucky Irving in the backfield, Troy Franklin on the outside. Uh, so a couple tight ends that I like too. This Oregon team has playmakers, and they have the ability to run the ball. But you know who else has loaded players all across the field? It's the Utah defense. Jonah Ellis leads that elite defensive line that is literally too deep at every single position along it. Then you talk about the linebackers. Yes, Nolander Barton is a crushing loss for this team, but Leovani Damuni was playing really well. And anytime Damuni was on the field, I would struggle in my film watch back, like any time throughout the season, to notice the linebacker changes from – if it was Demuni, Reed, or Barton. There were a couple other times where other guys would rotate in that you could notice it a little bit just because they're just not as good as those guys. But like Demuni is an all Pac 12 selection from Stanford a season ago. I believe Demuni is playing really good football and has been all year. So he is ready to take almost every snap with his defense. And I think he's going to excel in it. And of course, the secondary. I mean, Zamaya Vaughn and Miles Battle, Coach Witt said we're coming off their best game. Zamaya Vaughn in particular, I think he is one of the best corners in the Pac-12 this season and not getting a lot of hype for it, but he was rarely targeted last week. He forgot he was on the field, much like we would do with Clark Phillips a season ago. Outside of that, then get the safeties in. Cole Bishop, however much we see a Sione Vaki. Uh, Bishop's one of the best safeties in football right now and one of the best defensive players in the Pac-12, along with the Jonah Ellis, I would say, too. So it's best on best all over the field, and I am so excited for this showdown. So what are the keys to really like slowing down Bo Nix and can Utah do it? It's really the thing that you do with every quarterback, right? You want to 
get pressure on him. If Bo Nix has all day to throw, he's going to make he's going to make those throws. He's there's a reason he's barely turned it over this season. The Oregon offense has been per, incredibly productive. Whether that's them going and taking on Washington State, scoring 38. You know they lost to Washington, but still scored over 30 in that one. And yeah, Stanford, Colorado, not good teams, but they threw 40 points up on them. So the Oregon offense has proven how productive they can be. Bo Nix, his accuracy is very impressive. So Utah has to get pressure on him. Jonah Ellis is one of the best pass rushers in college football right now, and I do believe he's going to be able to get home a few times. But the Oregon offensive line is no slouches, so there's going to be plays where Bo Nix has time, and it'll be can Utah force what would hopefully become a coverage sack or just a poor decision by Bo. I'm not sure if Bo will turn the, the ball over in this one. I could see it being one. Make sure you guys stick till the end of the week for my uh, prediction show. I'll be talking about if I do think that will be happening in this game. But um, yeah, I, I think Bo does a good job, but I think there's an interior pass rush element for Utah that's also really impressive. Uh, Van Fillinger and Connor O'Toole both have been really been coming on recently too. So I, I do think it's going to be a great back and forth battle. I think Oregon will do well running the ball, but I just think it's hard against what is one of the best run defenses in college football. And yes, they struggled against USC last week at times. I think a lot of people were criticizing Lincoln Riley for getting away from running the ball. And in watching the game back, there were a couple times I was like, let's throw out the wide receiver screens if I'm USC and let's run the ball here more. But they would try to run it. And let's not forget Van Fillinger forced a fumble. And multiple runs they had would only gain a yard or two. And what happens when you're in second and eight and second and long? Unless you're Utah, who still finds a way to run the ball, you're, you're going to throw the ball from that point on. So I did think Utah's run defense improved, and uh, you know they were so worried about Caleb Williams above everything else. I don't think they um, were quite prepared for what USC had going physicality wise. You're going to be prepared for everything, like just all the challenges that Oregon prevents. Bucky Irving's a good back; he's capable of making the linebackers miss. But Cole Bishop's one of the best tacklers in space in the Pac-12. So is Sione Vaki. So are the Utah corners. They're physical too and willing to come down and lay the wood. So. That's where I do see this team having success. They're going to force multiple punts. I would be stunned if Oregon doesn't score over 20 in this game. But I do believe Utah can and will, and yes, I said will, hold them under 30 points because of how good the defense is. If you can win in the line of scrimmage, you can continue to win games. The rushing lanes aren't going to be there. I think the pressure is going to be on point for Utah from a pass rush standpoint. They'll make the tackles. The linebackers will. And there's going to be some big plays given up in this game. But... As all, when they always do, when those plays happen, the Utah defense responds almost every single time. After they give up a long touchdown, they come back the next drive and they force a punt. And they usually do that for a couple series because of how stout they've been all year long, too. So, yeah, Troy Franklin, he's going to beat Zamaya Vaughn. But I think Zamaya Vaughn's going to win some reps against, too. And same thing with JT Broughton, Miles Battle out there. I love the length that T.O. Johnson has back there at the safety free safety spot so much with uh, with Sione playing more offense. So, yes, I do believe the Utah defense is going to have success in slowing down Bo Nicks and this Oregon offense. I think they're going to hold them to what will end up being their lowest point total of the season because this offense is going to routinely throw up 30. There's just too much talent on them not to, but going into Rice Eccles Stadium is a different animal with the crowd noise, the fans getting into it, um, just how well Utah in general plays at home, and of course the altitude, always a factor for teams on the road. Uh, let's just say it didn't work out very well last time when uh, Oregon made their way out to Rice Eccles Stadium and they were ranked in the top 10. I I'll leave it there, but uh, Britton Covey and uh, all of you listening sure remember what happened in that matchup. But of course, Utah's defensive success is only one part of this matchup as we need to talk about how the Utah offense is going to do against a pretty stout Oregon Ducks defense. We're going to be diving into that in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys about our friends at Jace Medical. The Jace case is a personalized emergency medication kit that contains five essential antibiotics that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. You can also customize your case and add additional life-saving medications based on your unique needs. Jace Medical now offers custom ability for your Jace case with dozens of add-on medications. You can choose the medication that best fits your family's unique needs. And with Jace with the Jace case too, it's a great resource for you guys and your loved ones because you can go and buy a gift card for a family of your loved ones so that they can get a Jace case of their own. Make sure you guys head over to jacemedical.com and enter the code locked on at checkout for a $20 discount on your order. That's promo code locked on at J A S E medical.com. And once again, that discount, you can go to jacemedical.com and enter the code locked on at checkout for a $20 discount. I also want to talk to you guys about one of the sponsors of today's episode in our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. 
With FanDuel, you know you guys are getting the best options every week as it pertains to college and NFL action because you can snap into the action all football season long with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on that action. The app is easy to use, and there's a wide range of betting options, including the spreads, player props, over-unders, and so much more. So you can visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, an official partner of the NFL. And let's talk about the line a little bit for this game as it pertains to uh, Utah taking on the Oregon Ducks. Six, minus six and a half right now in favor of Oregon, of course. And I know I know it's crazy. I know I do it every week, guys, but I really do like Utah. And so far every week, I think I've been right outside of the Oregon State one. But, um, you know, especially Utah at home, right? Like it just... I believe in Utah to keep this within a touchdown. And of course I believe in Utah to win this game, but especially to keep it within a touchdown. Defense is too good. Bryson Barnes continues to find ways. Sione Vaki continues to be a star offensively. So yeah, make sure you guys over FanDuel, but um, I'm liking the Utah odds for uh for the listings on FanDuel there if the line and the line will continue to move, but I like it at six and a half in favor of Utah. I think they will absolutely cover. All righty, moving on to the second segment. Let's talk about the Utah offense uh, coming off their best performance, their best two performances of the season, in my opinion, when you go back to what they did against Cal and then the progress they made there to then go out and show out against the USC Trojans in the Coliseum. Oregon's defense is better. They are going to be, they're capable of making plays. Against Washington State, they held Cam Ward and that potent offense to just 24 points. And yes, they lost at Washington, but that's at Washington. Michael Penix is probably going to win the Heisman if it ended if it ended today. Um, we'll see if he can hold on to it through the season. He'd have my vote for sure, and I would love to see him win it. I think just he's been tremendous. Um, obviously, hope he plays well outside of the the Utah game. The Utah game is where he can definitely struggle and not look like a Heisman Trophy winner. But yeah, they played Stanford and Colorado. Neither of those two teams are very good. Stanford holding them to six is okay. USC's offense defense only held them to ten. How about holding Colorado to six? Especially when we saw USC totally let Colorado uh, hang in against them. So. It's impressive marks, and they have playmakers on the defensive side of the ball. We talk about guys like Dolores um, and just so many other guys we could point to, too, along the defensive front, in the secondary linebackers. They've been executing at a very high level. So the question then becomes, can Utah execute at a high level at home and make plays? And to me, it doesn't come down to Bryson Barnes because I think it will be defined in the run game. If Utah can run the ball... And if Utah has over 200 yards on the ground in this game, I expect Utah to win the game. And I think Utah will have success running the ball against Oregon. Oregon's run defense has been very good this, so far this season. They have not played any rushing teams the caliber of Utah, whether it's in the backs they faced or just the, the, the offensive line. Like, yes, Washington's offensive line is maybe better than Utah's. That's a discussion. But they don't run block like Utah does. Utah's run blocking is elite. When you're talking about the, especially post buy. Um, with Coley in at center and everyone getting healthy and just getting in the flow of the season. Uh, the zone blocking schemes have been on point for Utah. Also, I love the the variations of runs we did see against the Trojans. We talked about that last week, how there could be opportunity to get some runs going to the outside, and Utah did that. And I really liked seeing that on tape, that Utah was willing to get Jaquin and Jackson, Sione Vaki opportunities trying to get around the edge and let their uh, their speed take over and make plays. So will Utah have success moving the ball? I do do believe they will because of that rushing attack. I think the offensive line is in for another strong performance. Jaquindon Jackson is going to continue to grind out the tough yards, his exceptional vision of his ability to bounce off tacklers and move the chains. And of course, Sione Vaki, the last two weeks has been the best offensive player for Utah, which is insane because he's also one of their best defensive players, but he's that special of a player and the best two way player in college football for the last two weeks. That's not a hot take, in my opinion, if you really look at what Vaki's done, especially with Travis Hunter being a little more quiet coming off his injury. So, and by the time the year's done, I think Sione could very well be the best dual threat player in college football if you look at what he's done and has the potential to continue to do. So, talking about what this, uh, what Vaki, I think, can do in this game, I think he's going to make plays in the passing game. I'd love to see some more screens set up for him. Of course, you got to continue to get him on those wheel routes, get him favorable matchups with the linebackers. Um, but just get him the ball in space and or in uh, different ways. I mean, just the exceptional, we've talked about it a few times on the show, but like the sec, the cut he makes on the touchdown, 
against USC. He's a sack for a second touchdown. It's just exceptional. And he's just that level of a player and guy who's capable of making plays. So get the ball in Sione Vaki's hands as many creative ways as you can, including, of course, the direct snaps. I still expect to see a lot of Quentin Jackson and Sione Vaki getting snaps from Coley and uh, just running it themselves because using that extra running, that variation of two fast guys makes the read option hard enough to defend. And then you can also use the other one just as a read blocker in a, other running design schemes, which I personally really like about that formation. So running game, I do think could get going. Oregon's got some physical defensive linemen, some decent linebackers, but this Utah team to me runs it a little better than Oregon defends it. And yes, even though the stats may be not a hundred percent on Utah side, that's where I'm just looking at it. Like, okay, this is another level of a rushing team that they've played. And I think Utah is going to, it's going to reflect that for Utah. Now, the one thing that'll be hard for Utah is they could be facing a packed box. And that is of course, what will be hard, but I do think Bryson Barnes is capable of making the necessary throws for Utah to win this game because that's all he's done all season. Make the necessary throws for Utah to win the game. Whether we go back to Florida. Yeah, I know he was bad against Baylor, but let's especially look at like the home games. But you go back to Florida, you go back to Cal, and even like we've seen him do in tough environments. Washington State, USC a week ago. Like this is Bryson Barnes. He is capable of coming in the moments and making plays. Once again, Bryson will not be the guy who is the reason Utah wins this game. Like it's not like the defense is going to play terrible and Bryson will keep Utah in the game. Like I can't see that happening, but Bryson will continue to do what he does. Run the football smartly, pick his spots very wisely. He will continue to make accurate throws at times. I could, I think we could see an explosive play element return in this game. Cam Ward dropped some beautiful dimes and that's really a matchup where I think Utah Look, the the Oregon secondary is probably the weakest part of their defense just based on what I've seen. So that's where I think it's going to take good ball placement. But Bryson is capable of making some really nice throws, and I'm excited to see him get the opportunity when you have guys like Sione able to create separation. Of course, Devon Vele being a big body target that he is. Mikey Matthews, the quick shifty receiver for Utah. Money Parks, the straight speedy guy himself, just zooming past defenders. And Landon King being a really athletic pass catching tight end. I think there's a lot of guys capable of making plays for Utah and a Ducks defense that is liable to give up a few of them slowly but surely. So excited to see for Utah. Also, Minier McLean, of course, he had that one drop last week, but um, we saw him make that big grab against Cal and uh, had some big ones against Weber State too. So he's another guy that I expect to be involved in the passing attack for Utah. And I do believe this Utah team will have success moving the ball because I think they're going to run the ball and then the play-action game and everything else that Utah can do off of it, getting their quarterbacks on design rollouts on the move a little bit. That's where they can really start to thrive in this one. And I see that happening. I do see Utah having success moving the ball at times. Once again, it's going to be the same thing last week. Like this is not going to be Utah's going to throw up 40 points. Like it's going to be the grind it out game to get to 30 because Utah will have negative running plays. Bryson will miss a throw, uh, missed assignments in the blocking aspect where Utah will not be marching up and down the field. But I do believe they will have a few successful drives just like they did last week against USC. So and we know that Andy Ludwig is going to come in dialed up with a great game plan to maximize Bryson, Sione, and try to exploit some of those weaknesses the Ducks defense have shown, even if it's not many weaknesses at all on the season. So that's the matchup. Be back with you guys tomorrow in terms of talking about the Oregon versus Utah game a little bit more as we gear up for college game day and just game day in general in Rice Eccles Stadium. Tough one, this Oregon game. We've been talking about it for a long time, and we still got two more full episodes breaking it down. But before before we get out of here today, I do want to talk about um, just what Kyle Whittingham has done this season a little bit more because it's been absolutely tremendous. And we are going to be diving into that in one moment. But first, I want to talk to you guys about another one of the great sponsors of our episode today in eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. They have over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. I also want to talk to you guys about another one of the sponsors of today's episode in our friends at UCCU. Learn and earn the UCCU mobile banking app that pays your entire family to learn about money. 
Kids look to parents to become more financially literate. Parents, they don't always know the answers. Learn Earn breaks down financial topics into fun, bite-sized educational games. They have like quizzes and trivia. Every time a family member completes a topic, they earn points that can occur and can be redeemed for gift cards to stores like Amazon, Apple, Sephora, Walmart, Nike, and more. There is age-appropriate content for every member of the family who can compete against each other on leaderboards. And this is a great opportunity for you guys to come together as a family, compete against one another. It's so much fun to use the UCCU app. And Learn Earn is inside that UCCU mobile banking app. So play it anytime, anywhere. The more you play, the more you learn. And the more you learn, the more you earn. Learn and Earn, part of UCCU's award-winning Be Money Smart Youth Banking Program. Helping kids, teens, and parents have fun while becoming more financially literate together. UCCU, love where you bank. All righty, closing this one out. Yeah, Kyle Winningham's the best coach in the Pac-12, and I don't think it's close right now. I think going into the season, I would have taken Witt over anyone. But I will say I would, did not have a problem and with people who did say Lincoln Riley because Lincoln Riley has made two college football playoffs, and Kyle Whittingham has, hasn't done that. And even at the time, it's like, yes, Utah got Lincoln in his first season, and you got to credit Coach Witt for having better game plans, but like, it, it's still just one year. Like, I want to be fair and like give – you know, Lincoln, a chance to bring more of his guys in, bring them on like that. And, um, and yeah, and then you look at the game this year and it's like, well, USC has to win it, right? With UFT, Utah beating them twice last year and, you know, no cam rising and boop, Utah walks in and wins. Kyle Whittingham is the best coach in the Pac-12 for his ability, despite all the injuries, to continue to keep this roster together, to have built a culture where that next man mentality is applied and applied successfully because Utah continues to find ways to win games in large part because of the depth they have, not at just one position, but almost every position on the field. It's been really impressive to watch this team continue to go to work and have that success. And it doesn't, it starts with Kyle Whittingham. It really does for what he's built this program into. So he is absolutely the best coach in the Pac-12 to me right now. Kalen DeBoer has done some nice things. Dan Lanning is in the midst of doing some nice things too. Deion Sanders is still in the process of quickly turning things around. But as it pertains right now in the final season of Pac-12 play, you have to roll with Kyle Whittingham. And even going back to those points I made about like Lincoln Riley for his past success, it's a lot different getting successful. Like we said, just talented recruits. There is a perception about Utah out there amongst recruits. It exists. And amongst people in general about coming to Salt Lake City. Now, just like when you got out there, like I've said before on this show, I got out there and I was blown away by Utah. I, I loved Utah. I loved every second of my time out there. And I, I think that when you're talking about the Utah football program too, just the success that they've built that's allowed these players to be willing to come all the way from places like Florida and join this team and fall in love with it like a Jalen Glover has and be a part of the culture that they're brewing, that they're breeding here because it is very special. So really impressed with what Utah football continues to do. And that goes to Kyle Whittingham, who has to be the best coach in the Pac-12 for get turning how he's transformed this program continues to have them as one of the best week in and week out and just year in and year out, honestly. So Kyle Whittingham, the best coach in the pac 12 currently can't imagine many of you disagree with me there. Uh, two things before we go. Number one, we've been talking about this for a while. Please stop calling Bryson Barnes, the third string quarterback or the fourth string. If you want to, because it technically got moved behind Nate or anything like that. There were reports coming out about Brandon Rose before the injury was suffered that the backup quarterback battle was open once again. It is one thing to win the job in spring ball in practice and ramping up for the spring game, but it's a totally different thing to win it in fall camp and to be the guy who starts against Florida. Maybe that would have been Brandon Rose, but I feel like it was going to be Bryson Barnes. Kyle Winningham likes his experienced quarterbacks who don't turn the ball over. It's exactly what Bryson Barnes has proven to be. So I do believe that Bryson would have and would continue to be the guy for Utah had he not been, you know, dealt with the issues he had against Baylor. And just if, even if Brandon Rose didn't get hurt, Bryson still would have been the starter of the first game of the season. I truly believe that. And even if you don't, once again, please stop doing the, don't just stop discrediting Bryson. Like, why are we doing that? And I'm not trying to discredit him when I call him a game manager. I say he's a very good game manager, which is the truth. But like Bryson is one of the best backup quarterbacks in college football. It is so hard to find good backup quarterbacks in college football. Look around after starters get hurt, and you'll see the drop-off that teams have. Sometimes it's hard to find quality quarterbacks in college football in general because you see how much some of these teams are struggling because of the quarterback play. And, yes, the quarterback play is not one of the strengths of the Utah football team, but they continue to win games, and Bryson continues to make plays too. So 
stop calling him the third string quarterback. He was pretty much always going to be the backup based on how things were trending, in my opinion, because it's Kyle Whittingham. He was not starting a guy who's never played before against a team like the Florida Gators. I, I just can't see that based on what we know about Witt. So that's that. Also, fun little game I want to play for uh, all of you who do make it to the end of these episodes. Um, please leave in the comments how many of uh, fellow comments you think there will be about the fact that I am wearing a shade of blue in this episode. It's kind of a little bit of a gray. I feel like it looks like in the camera, but it is like a light blue. Um, you guys are always quick to let me know when I do wear blue. So I am curious to see how many people end up commenting um, that I may just make the comments of like, wear something else. Why are you in blue? Which I have no problem with. I think it's all the fun and games. And I rarely wear blue for that reason, but just so happens tonight that I did. So I'm going to set the over under at three comments. I would probably take the over, but uh, let me know in the comments uh, how many comments you guys think I'm going to get about uh, deciding to wear blue here. But um appreciate all of you greatly who listened to the end of this episode. Uh, you're one of the things that makes doing this show so much fun. I'm uh, going to continue to try to get to everyone's comments as much as I can. And uh, looking forward to being back with you guys once again tomorrow, of course. We're going to be doing some game predictions, which Utah I really think are going to shine. Some of the offensive and defensive players for Utah that I think could have big games and what would be another monumental upset. And I know Utah's at home. I don't care. This is an upset. Oregon should win this game. But I still think Utah's going to find a way to do it because why would I doubt Kyle Whittingham right now? So that'll be on tomorrow's show. You guys have a great day, and as always, go use.